Hey guys, Lou here. Welcome back to the channel. It is summer and I hope you all are having a good one and having a safe one at that as well. Wanted to give you a little look around on what's going on in the backyard. Primarily two things that are in good show right now. This is the garden enclosure that I built last year. It was around a year ago when I did this, uh, right around July. And it has been a good feature back in uh, the big span of lawn that we have. Also wanted to give you an update on how how the limelight hydrangeas that I planted around the crepe myrtle tree that we have in the middle of our backyard. This is a clip of how I prepare for the growing season. This was obviously taken back in uh, late winter and what I'm doing here is pruning limelight hydrangeas. Limelight hydrangeas are very much different from the macrophyllus, the big mop heads. Blooms of the limelight hydrangeas grow from new wood, which means you can really cut this thing back down. What I did here, because it's its second year uh, into the garden, I wanted to just cut off about a third of the plant, and that's what I am doing. I am carefully uh, cutting off all the dead uh, blooms. I left the dead blooms on because we don't want any moisture, any excess and unwanted moisture unwelcome moisture to go into the plant and seep into um, the very tender uh, green growth that is being covered by the dried up branches. Just to break it down for you guys even further, the reason why I like limelight hydrangeas is number one, it can withstand the heat here in North Carolina. It requires good deep watering at least once a week and it just lasts for five to six days. It thrives in this very exposed side center of our lawn and if you have that type of section in your property, limelight hydrangeas not only will give you that wow factor when you plant them en masse, meaning quite a lot of uh, different plants all in one planting, it will really withstand the heat and the humidity as well. Another thing that's good with it is this thing is growing in clay. I only amended clay with good compost and every year I plan on just topping it up with compost on uh, the top of the plant along the root level, uh, making sure that it's the mulch that will serve as the protection from weeds for the entire growing season. Each stem on this plant can produce at least a dozen individual gargantuan blooms and you'll see that in the later clips of this video. The other thing that I wanted to showcase today is this neat garden enclosure that I built by hand myself last year. It took me several weeks to complete this project but it was well worth it because this New England style handmade enclosure is really the best partner for this type of planting application. Garden structures and vertical elements in the garden are very, very important in order to break up the space, guide the eye, something that will be highlighted and punctuated at certain key parts of the lawn, which is what I did in our case. This is made of pressure treated wood, pressure treated wood that are uh, built at right angles and those right angles are located on each corner creating a big square. A few thoughts on pruning. That is the next segment of this video. In order to get good blooms and good growth on every single bush that I planted, which by the way, I have a total of four individual big bushes in each corner of the garden enclosure. And what I'm doing here, the trinities I call of pruning is you, you take off the dead, the damaged and the diseased branches. Anything that crosses, anything that is already brittle and brown, uh, which will only uh, invite uh, disease into the plant, you take them all off. And anything that is really an excess of the overall size of the bush is what I had to remove. Like I told you earlier, I planned on cutting off and pruning a third uh, of the amount of this plant. Another side note in the application of pruning for any plant is I go all the way down to the bottom of the base of the plant, really removing all those branchlets. Those are the ones that will prevent any good air circulation from flowing. And that's the thing that I wanted for this plant to have, not only to have good soil to grow in, good amendments to be placed every growing season and at growing intervals, but also have good circulation along the way. Just remember that with limelight hydrangeas, it is best to prune them late winter and after good deciduous pruning, here is the result. Check out all the blooms on this plant, y'all. Look at all those big blooms, big growth, 
very robust and very floriferous, uh, the four bushes of limelights that we planted in each corner of this garden enclosure. These blooms measure at least 10 inches long, up to 12 inches per bloom, and very happy with the result this year. This is the second year I've had uh, this particular planting application uh, go into a full show like this. It has given a good garden feature in the middle. This is an awkward tree that was planted by the builder of the home uh, right in the middle of our backyard. And uh, I had to do something about it to make sure that it becomes a better feature, something that was really bad looking. Uh, we were able to develop this and uh, build something functional and good to look at. I find myself giving it enough high nitrogen in the beginning when all the small leaves were coming up this was during the time of late winter early spring it received a lot of uh, high nitrogen feed and uh, a lot of good all-purpose fertilizer as well the moment it showed some of the small blooms i started uh, converting the amendments from high nitrogen to or high potash and the high potash feed uh, really allowed for all of these blooms to be highlighted grow vigorously and overall us enjoying healthy plants now it's always good to note that hydrangeas come in many varieties the ones that we planted here are what's called panicle hydrangeas these are pyramidal flower head shapes or panicles Hydrangea paniculata, the name that they called for this cultivar, all of which are characterized by their large, almost pyramidal flower heads. Unlike mop heads and lace cap hydrangeas, panicle hydrangeas will flower better if given some direct sun. And that's exactly what I did in this planting application. They will grow in a position of full sun or partial shade in moist, well-draining, very fertile soil. Panicle hydrangeas, including the limelights, grow their flowers on the current year's growth, the new wood that grows for the current growing year, so they should be pruned in early spring. I did mine in late winter because here in North Carolina, that would be the better time for me. One can prune hydrangeas earlier, but the flowers, the faded flower heads look beautiful over the winter, and that's what I do. The dried up big flower heads of the limelights give a lot of structure and a lot of architectural interest into the garden, particularly under the myrtle tree and around and inside this garden enclosure. The other benefit of pruning in late winter is that prune early, they don't heal well. The twigs or the cut ends of the branches of the limelights, in my experience, don't heal well it can become an entry point for any bacteria or anything that would harm the plant. And so that's the reason why I leave them on. It's around late March when I start pruning them back. And here's a pruning secret. I know we all get hung up on how to prune, what to prune, when to prune. Here's the secret. Cut back old stems to leave around only four pairs of buds on the stem. Guaranteed, this will encourage vigorous new growth that will bear the largest panicles and look at the example that I am showing you. All this new growth came from only four leaf buds, pairs of leaf nodes that I've cut during the winter back to and it has produced all these massive blooms. And just as a big group like this, I think I have at least 300 blooms all together in this one planting application. The easiest to grow because they are the easiest to prune. It is one of the major reasons why I will continue to collect a lot of limelights into the property. Now as far as limelight colors for the blooms, unlike mop heads and lace cap hydrangeas which have interchangeable flower colors, pink and alkaline soil, blue and acid soil, panicle hydrangeas are much less affected by soil pH meaning the flowers will continue to stay nearly white and will only turn in various shades of light green to pink as they mature. Well, there you have it, guys. This is my secret to growing limelight hydrangeas and how to use limelight hydrangeas in an open, full sun area planted within a homemade garden enclosure that I built. I hope I was able to encourage you to consider growing limelights 
Mop heads are great and in the future I will be showing you my collection of mop head hydrangeas that I've transplanted more than 15 years ago from our previous home in the Northeast. Many thanks again to you guys for following me, subscribing, and joining me in this video. I hope that folks around the world, my friends in India, uh, I got friends now in Australia, in the Philippines, and many other parts of the world, Canada, Britain. Uh, I hope you guys are doing well and enjoying this season. Stay safe, look after yourself. Acorn Hill is a steadily growing channel and we welcome all of you to join into the fold. Welcome into Acorn Hill and chime in, subscribe, share and like our videos for more interesting and more informative contents coming up. For now, this is Louis enjoying our limelight in the heat of summer here in North Carolina. Thanks for being with me on the channel and we'll see you back here in Acorn Hill. Bye bye for now. Thank you.